Hello and welcome back to my channel, Africa Psych. My name is Funi. Um, the next opinions are my opinions and no one else's. So today's topic is a continuation of last week's topic, Abusive Relationships Part 1. Um, today is Part 2 and this one will be tackling women in particular. Why does it become a trend for some women to stay in physical abusive relationships and why do they stay? Please watch my previous video, part one, in order to understand what constitutes an abusive relationship. I always try to talk about relationships without having to segregate genders or sexual orientations. However, with regards to domestic violence, um, physical abuse, it has been scientifically proven that the majority of abusers or perpetrators are men. So when I refer to a man as an abuser, I'm also including a woman who is the abused woman's partner for lesbian relationships. Most women are either knowingly in an abusive relationship or they just do not recognize the abuse. I am Gen Y and way back when, around 1999, 2000, I had a few friends who were a bit older than me. We were starting to have boyfriends at that time. So one of my friends was in a relationship with an older boy. She would talk about him slapping her around whenever she misbehaved. And she, she actually enjoyed talking about it. It made her feel good. She got so used to it that she would provoke him to lay a hand on her. She stayed because that was the life she had chosen for herself at the hands of that guy. It eventually became the norm in her relationship that she was supposed to be beaten in order to be shown love. It actually became the norm for all her relationships that I know of. If you are like her, then you have a trend. There are women who went through some childhood trauma and that causes them to lean towards partners who resemble the perpetrator. Some traumas are addictive and by that I mean that the victim will continue to expose themselves to the trauma in order to deal with it. That becomes her coping mechanism. Someone once joked about herself being a magnet to abusive men. She said that every time she dates a man, that man is an abusive guy. She wasn't a magnet at all. She chose a man just like everyone else. Every relationship starts in the cloud nine phase. She turned all her partners into abusive men. Let me explain. She has trauma, be it childhood or not. She got so used to being abused that she needed to be beaten up to feel alive. She would taunt the guy until he loses it and eventually lay a hand on her. This person has lost so much of her own identity that she lives under the shadow of the man. She will do anything for him, for he represents that which she fears and admires at the same time. So she's caught between a confusing world. She fears this person, but at the same time admires this person. So Stockholm Syndrome things, I guess. She needs to take a step back and try to find herself. Now the tricky part of it is how does she find herself if she doesn't know what she is looking for? She does not need to find herself because she never was or existed in the first place. If one had childhood trauma, she did not get the chance to establish who she really is and becoming as a young woman or as a woman. She sees the world through the eyes of the perpetrator or through the eyes of the perpetrator. Hence, everything that represents the perpetrator and the trauma that comes with it is seen as normal in her world. If one doesn't deal with the trauma, it will keep on repeating itself over and over and over again and unfortunately overflowing to other people as well. It becomes an addiction and we all know that addictions always have to be fed. So unfortunately for this one, the addiction causes pain and she needs to keep on feeding that pain. Instead of telling her to walk away from her abusive partner, which currently she will not, help her to go to therapy to try and just maintain her mental well-being and to find out what type of a character or person she is. Because she still needs to learn who she is at this point of time in her life. Because that was taken away from her by the trauma she experienced when she was still a child. Once she has started working on herself, then she can start gradually realizing other parts of her life that should not be defining her, like the abusive partner. As long as she doesn't know who she is, she will always fall victim of those who can take advantage of her. She who yearns for pain will continue living her life according to trying to always please the partner, meaning that she becomes a yes person and will always allow the abuse because without the pain, she cannot exist. For her to exist, pain should too. One cannot exist without the other. 
Some women even advise their physical abusive partners to rather bruise her where people will not see. You think that this is crazy, right? It's not. Remember, for her, it's normal. She needs to feel that pain. She needs to see the bruises on her body in order to feel fulfilled. This woman has developed a coping mechanism for the abuse in such a way that she's able to numb herself from the pain when the beating is underway. Like, for example, all she feels is just the bounces of a fist on her skin. She's not feeling the effects of that fist anymore. The sight of the bruises fulfills her. The bruises represent her partner's undying love. She will keep the abuse a secret because you might take away the only thing she has ever known or cherished. Those women will leave a good partner all because they are not being abused and call them boring. Unfortunately, these kinds of women are also physical abusers because their provoking methods might also include them beating up their partner. So it always ends up in a scuffle. The victim is also the perpetrator, meaning that the partner is acting in self-defense. Remember, there's multiple perceptions um, to a story. Your side, mine, and the real truth. Unfortunately, the truth is always missed or misinterpreted. Hence, we are a nation of angry people. This woman doesn't know what happiness is and therefore seeks it in all the wrong places and believes that that which causes pain is happiness. Some women might not have childhood trauma, but trauma that was caused by a sexual partner. She was able to break away from the perpetrator, but not the type of abuse. So she carries that type of abuse with her everywhere she goes. Hence, she thinks she's a magnet to abusive men. You have to remember one thing, though, about the abusers. People who are professional abusers, for lack of a better word, um, they, they strategize on how they are going to lure their victims. They are patient because for them, the end goal is much more fulfilling than the road they are taking. You have to remember that the perpetrator is also battling with demons or traumas of his own and also has developed his own coping mechanism. Unfortunately, the victim is their medicine in this case. When profiling these men, they are always the best partners at the beginning of the relationship. He's a good listener. He will want to know everything about you from childhood, know everyone you know, and even go the extra mile of befriending some of your friends. Hell, he will even buy you a car. When you know everything about a person, it becomes easier to know their strengths and weaknesses. Once you are blindsided about how good they are, you then drop your guard down. We always get surprised by the caliber of women who fall victim to abuse. It doesn't matter how educated, rich, or beautiful you are. These men know how to break you down. Don't forget to love and take care of yourself while in that cloud nine phase. You are comfortable and starting to feel very safe around this person. He's your rock now. Um, he is the most understanding person you have ever known. Whilst all this is happening, he might be beginning to see a version of his trauma or the person responsible for his trauma on you, which is now causing him to start developing feelings of resentment towards you, his partner. Remember, at this moment, he is her king. So everything the king says goes. I mean, he is the provider, the source of your happiness, right? I'm talking to you who does not know how to make yourself happy, but you rely on other people to make you happy. Now, the, the next phase begins. Now that he knows everything about you and everyone around you, he starts the process of eliminating people from your life, citing that they are bad influences to you. He will do so until no one is left. You will agree to the process of elimination because he is the king and he knows what is best for you, right? Once that is done, and then he starts targeting you, the partner, your character. Um, remember, this person knows your strengths and weaknesses. And some of those strengths, they broke down during the process of elimination or him isolating you from other people. So now she's getting broken piece by piece. His sole purpose now is to break down the remaining strength she is left with. She is still not seeing it because she is still blinded by how he treated her in the beginning. And remember, this person was also going all out for her friends and her family members as well. So they also have this undying love for him. So him being abusive is the last thing in their minds and some might not even believe her in this lifetime. He starts targeting her strengths by identifying um, cracks or flaws 
and he will make sure that he targets her persona, her soul. You do not come back easily from having your soul broken into pieces. She starts losing confidence in herself and eventually loses any sense of worth or sense of self. She loses her identity completely. This guy might even go to the extent of making her quit her source of income, her job, causing her to now rely on him financially. The abuser might even have labels for each abusive incident. Um, I mean, she, she's being reprimanded, right? You're a kid. You are being reprimanded for whatever that you're doing. So, for example, she, you might be reprimanded for smiling too much when you were meeting Tom. So you deserve to be reprimanded. Sometimes you even get reprimanded for breathing the oxygen. Just by breathing, you get reprimanded. Um, this person won't leave because she doesn't recognize all this as abuse. It is normal for her and he is still perceived as the good guy he was in the beginning of the relationship. These abusers know how to make a first impression last and how to use that impression to manipulate their way into the abusive relationship. He promises her heaven on earth. And by that, I mean that he will strangle her until she sees a glimpse of heaven. Not paradise, heaven. So unfortunately, some of our sisters were sent to heaven by their abusive partners. They couldn't stay nor leave the relationship. They were carried out in a coffin to the heaven they were shown on earth by their abusive partners. Him abusing her is his way of dealing with his own traumas as well, remember? Traumatized people can be very traumatizing. Hurt people hurt people. The best way to help her is to help her find herself first, regain her confidence and sense of worth, know her worth and know how to make herself happy first before expecting others to make her happy. Only then will she be able to identify the abuse. She doesn't stay because she wants to. She stays because she doesn't know that she's being abused. She stays because she doesn't recognize it as abuse. She feels fulfilled by the abuse and she worships the ground her partner walks on. She still needs to find herself first because if she doesn't know who she is, she can't identify the abuse at all. He, on the other hand, makes her feel guilty about the abuse by blaming herself. He will even say something like, you see what you are making me do. I love you so much and it hurts me more than you know. So she will eventually start feeling sorry for him while he is busy beating her up. Do you know how weird that sounds? So then she starts dedicating herself to making it right with him and in turn neglecting herself. If you pay close attention to her, to an, abuse, uh, an abused woman, you, you will even notice that she has even started neglecting how she looks, her physical appearance. Remember, physical abuse is always accompanied by emotional abuse. So he just doesn't break her bones, but also breaks her spirit, her soul. So she's walking around with broken bones and a shattered soul. How do we expect her to get out of that situation without our help? We have been learning and some succeeding in the art of self-care lately. It is coming all right. Most of you are beginning to understand what it means to live one's life instead of just being alive. We need to start learning how to nudge our loved ones towards doing the same without them realizing it. Learn to change one's thinking to help them become a better version of themselves without making them feel like we think we know too much. Learn the art of persuading someone to think positively in order to change their behavior. But anyway, for other people, it is just for sexual pleasure feeling the pain and seeing the bruises. It is a sexual fantasy or they just simply get turned on by the pain. In that case then, there is no abuse. It is purely for their own sexual pleasure. Some BDSM shit. As long as both parties consent. Thank you once again for watching till the end. Do not forget to subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button, turn on notification and share.